The Word of God sings, the Word of God speaks, and we hear today about the bread of life and how it's enough. So hear these words that come from the Gospel of John. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are, look, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe, that you believe in the one who has sent him. And so they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it, was, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven, and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. And God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. As many of you know, our youth group went on a mission trip just a few weeks ago to East Dallas. And after an exhausting week of doing different service projects, working uh, uh, on home repair and construction and, and learning about affordable housing and homelessness and, and segregation and de facto segregation and racism and all these worship services and Bible studies, we capped off that week with a day of quote-unquote fun at Six Flags. And at the front gate, we adults explained the plan. You can go wherever you want in the park all day, just as long as you stay in groups of three. And I knew that our high schoolers would be fine with this. It wasn't them I was worried about. I was worried about the middle schoolers. That, that, that's who I was concerned about. And it wasn't just our middle schoolers. There were other youth groups that were there, and some of their middle schoolers joined our tribe. And so it became a group of about 10 kids. And keep in mind, I had been teaching these kiddos, taking care of these kiddos all week, and observing these amazing people. And so I had an idea in my mind of what might happen if this particular group was unleashed in Six Flags for 10 hours. And so I felt God's nudge saying, go with that group. Don't let them out of your sight. <laughs> to which I said, fine. <laughs> and... As soon as we hit the park, they start saying to me, Dan, when can we ride this ride? Dan, I want to ride that roller coaster. Dan, which one should we ride first? As if I have a plan at the ready, you know? And so I said, okay, since some of you have never ridden some of the scarier rides that we have here, why don't we start off slow? Let's see what happens. And so we went to one of the more novice roller coasters in the park, and it was fun. And the kids were all smiling, hands in the air, and they're yelling, woo! But then we get off the ride, and they start grumbling. That wasn't scary. That was boring. What's next? So I said, okay, let's try the Judge Roy scream. Well, you know the Judge Roy scream? It's your standard up and down roller coaster. The group says, yeah, let's ride that one. They got their hands in the air. They're yelling. They're having a great time. The second we get off the ride, they start up again. That was fun, but it wasn't enough. And so we head to Gotham City where we encounter Mr. Freeze, the high-powered roller coaster that goes from zero to 78 miles per hour in, I think, 2.8 seconds. That ride was insane. And the kids get off that one exasperated, hair messed up, smiling, and they're going, that was awesome. 
But then the second that they catch their breath, they say, so what's next? <laughs> so now it's time to go to the pinnacle Six Flags experience, the Titan, the fastest, scariest roller coaster in the park with a 255-foot drop. And the kids are squealing with glee the entire time on this ride. They're laughing their heads off from the moment it slowed down to the moment it finally stopped. They're talking about how incredible it was the entire way down the ramp back into the park. Kaiji nearly lost his glasses on that one. <laughs> but after a few minutes of standing around and catching their breath, they pause again and they say, I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, what are we going to do now? This begs a question that I want to put before all of us this morning. How much is enough? When is it ever enough? Enough thrills? Enough money? Enough space? Enough room on our smartphone? Enough Netflix binge watching? Enough affirmation, enough of those attaboy, a girl. enough bread. To get us back on track this morning, Jesus had just healed tons of people. He'd fed the masses with five loaves and two fishes, calmed a violent storm, walked on water, and the crowds are, still, are so astounded at Jesus that they start stalking Him because they want more, more, more. And in today's reading from John's Gospel, the people, they corner Jesus and he tells them, look, I'm the bread of life. Believe in me and you'll never be hungry again. And they say, okay, show us a sign that you're the bread of life. And this is perfectly normal. True prophets have to back up what they're saying with amazing works or signs in this ancient tradition. That's how they prove themselves. But from our vantage point, we might imagine an annoyed Jesus saying, I just healed tons of people. I fed 5,000 of you with next to nothing. I just calmed a storm. I just walked on water. What more do you need? And like a group of middle schoolers at Six Flags, the crowd might say, yeah, that was awesome. But that wasn't enough. What else you got? What's next? How much is enough? When are we ever satisfied? Now here we get to the crux of today's message. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. It seems that we have our answer right here in this spiritual direction from Jesus. If you go looking for things like thrills, money, space, and material things for fulfillment, then you will only increase your appetite. Get hungrier and hungrier. But if you seek me, Jesus says, the bread of life that endures for eternal life, you will never go hungry. Simple, right? It's a philosophical question. The fill of the loaves, as in the bread in our tummy, versus the fulfillment of our lives. Discern between the two correctly, and you'll be satisfied. Simple. But Jesus didn't go around preaching some truncated gospel like we often do in North American Christianity, where we say, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then everything will start coming up roses for you. John's gospel is by far the most evangelical of the gospels, far more than Matthew, Mark, or Luke. But even in John's gospel, Jesus does not go around saying, accept me as your Lord and Savior, and then I'll heal you. Accept me as your Lord and Savior, and then I will feed you. Accept me as your Lord and Savior, and then I will save you from a violent storm at sea. No, he does all of these miraculous things while simultaneously preaching a message of salvation for all of God's people. A message that at its core never loses sight of the truth that we belong to one another in this urgent matter of salvation. A word which at the core of it means healing. You see, the philosophical question is more of a theological one. The fill of the bread in our stomach and the fulfillment of our lives. 
It appears that it's not one or the other, but both. Just as physical hunger and spiritual hunger cannot be differentiated from each other in how we understand our faith in Christ, neither can social justice and spirituality be differentiated from one another in how we practice our faith. Bishop Desmond Tutu says, I don't preach a social gospel. I preach the gospel, period. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is concerned for the whole person, he says. When people were hungry, Jesus didn't say, now is that political or social? He said, I feed you, because the good news to a hungry person is bread. What does bread mean to you today? What does your daily bread mean for you today? In other words, when you're hungry, you're hungry. And we're not ourselves when we're hungry. So the Snickers ad reminds us, we, God's children, who belong to each other. Nikolai Bordiev puts it this way, the question of bread for myself is a material question, but the question of bread for my neighbor is a spiritual question. What end of that are we on today? We're still bound by it. And again, if we belong to one another, neighbor to neighbor, then the bread of life is going to mean different things to me from day to day than they do for my neighbor. But how she or he or Z or I understand that daily bread does not make it any less the bread of life for any one of us. And when it comes to our daily bread, it's always enough. The bread of life is enough for today. So despite my initial example of our youth group at Six Flags, they truly do understand this notion of the bread of life being something of physical and spiritual fulfillment that cannot be one or the other, but always both and always enough. So I'd like to wrap up today's message by just sharing a testimony about my time with our young people this week. Last Wednesday... I had the opportunity to spend the day in Austin with our three youth who went on that trip, Kendall and Sean and Spencer, and they were working with Reach Beyond Mission to learn about food justice. That was the emphasis of the mission trip. And on Wednesday, they were volunteering with this ecumenical nonprofit called Mobile Loaves and Fishes. Some of you may have heard of Mobile Loaves and Fishes. In a nutshell, Mobile Loaves and Fishes fills trucks with food and refreshments and clothing, and then drives those trucks to different areas of the city where people are in greatest need. It's a really cool operation. One side of the truck, trailer opens up like this makeshift food trailer, and the back of it opens up and turns into a beverage counter, and the other side of it opens up into a clothes bin where they have clothes and shoes for children and adults, and they even have books and some media, like audio tapes and stuff like that. And people take whatever they need, whatever they need. And before we left the Mobile Loaves and Fishes commissary, their headquarters, the group made 80 meat and cheese sandwiches and 80 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And we didn't mess around with the PB&Js. This was going to be the only protein that some of our neighbors would eat that day. And so we spread that peanut butter on thick. Thick! It was like we were making peanut butter and jelly cakes. (laughs) Mobile Loaves and Fishes has hundreds of volunteers preparing food like this every day for people who are desperately hungry. And every day, local businesses provide meat and cheese, and peanut butter, and jelly, and bread. And I'm not talking about a bunch of generic bread from the grocery store. I'm talking about loaves of artisan bread from bakeries throughout the city. And when our group finished our day of work at these different sites, sharing what we'd prepared with our neighbors, there was enough to go around. The bread of life is enough for today. The first site that we were stopping at was at Barton Springs. It's a natural water source, so a lot of people who are homeless camp there. And when we pulled into that dirt parking lot, someone immediately came up to the truck and pulled out a pair of shoes and put them on his feet, and he said, oh, that feels good. Bless you all. 
Thank you so much. And one of the adults noticing this that was volunteering with us asked our mobile loaves and fishes coordinator, so do they always take the clothes? And she said, no. And even when they do, a lot of times they'll return them. They'll bring back shoes and jeans, and they'll say, you know what, I found some that fit me better, or I was able to buy some for myself, so I wanted to give these back to you. And then I turned around and asked our other adult volunteers, how much stuff do we have in our closets and our chest of drawers that we never use? Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? When we go to the margins and Jesus starts talking to us. The bread of life is enough for today. There was a youth group from Slidell, Louisiana on the trip, and one of their kids was a boy named Nick. Little Nick. There were two Nicks on the trip, and he was the littler one. Little Nick. He was going into the seventh grade. He's one of the sweetest kids that I've ever met. And he's also on the autism spectrum. And in a moment where we were observing the kids interacting with people coming to the food trucks, one of the adults from the Slide L group and I, we got to talking. And she said that Nick has something like nine brothers and three sisters, and that most of them have varying mental disabilities. And not only that, she said that a majority of the children and the youth in their church, which has a high number of young people, have some form of mental disability. And she said, we don't have some program that drew our children and youth to this church. It just happened that way. And it encouraged us as a congregation to pull together to learn about our young people and their unique gifts with Asperger syndrome and such. And I said, wow, that must make you all ten times more hospitable a congregation to all people than you'd be without the amazing young people in your midst. And she said, yeah, you know, it's pretty amazing. We listen to each other. We learn from each other. We make do. And God always provides. The bread of life is enough for today. And Nick was one of the most personable kids at the Mobile Loaves and fishes truck. People four times Nick's size would walk up to the truck and they would tower over his tiny body and he'd squint up at them and say, well, how are you this fine day? Would you like something to eat? We have meat and cheese sandwiches. We have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We have oranges. We have apples. And at the end of the truck, you'll find cold lemonade and iced tea. How can I help you? At the Barton Spring Stop, there was a man with a conga drum strapped over his shoulder, and Nick gave this man a sandwich. And I don't know whether Nick meant to say it to the man or not, but he blurted out loud, I've never played a percussion instrument before. And the man looked at Nick and said, You've never played a drum? Here, I'll teach you. And so the man with the conga drum and Nick sat on the grass in the shade of a tree just a few feet away from the food truck, And the man taught Nick how to play his drum. And while Nick and the man's hands took turns banging out a rhythm, one of the adults from Nick's church started dancing to the beat. And when Nick looked up for a second and realized what was going on, his face lit up even brighter than the smile he would show to every person who approached him at the food truck. It was a moment, I'm sure, that his formative self will not soon forget. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The bread of life is enough for today. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, Holy Provider, as you showered the ground with manna in the wilderness for your people to have enough to eat, we know that you are providing us with all we need to not just survive, but to be fully alive this day and always, as you hope for us to be. Help us to not lose heart when we hunger for justice that never comes quickly enough, for progress that moves at snail's pace, for bread to fill our stomachs. Guide us in our discernment each day so that the daily bread for which we pray does not become an abundance of privilege which we keep from and worship yet Lord over our neighbor. 
When we have more than our fill of the loaves of your hope and peace and love, O God, empower us to share our daily bread so that others would see Christ in us and no one would ever hunger or thirst again. Amen.